Hi everyone, Tasha here from Stardust Gold Crochet. Today we're going to work the Neptune Beach Dress, which is a pattern I came up with recently. I used Heartland yarn and a double-ended Tunisian crochet hook, and this is a, it's an eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter. And I also used as a contrasting color a yarn from I Love This Cotton, which is awesome. It's called Prince. And the print color that I used in this colorway is, um, it's called Pink, Green, and Purple Print. And it's really great. It has a bunch of awesome colors in there. And with Heartland, I used the color Denali. And this is a four, a, a weight four. And this is also a weight four. Um, this is 100% cotton, and this is acrylic. I know they say not to mix them, but I like to live dangerously, so. Um, okay, so this is the pattern here. This is the dress. Um, I used, I came up with a Tunisian stitch that is actually a ribbing stitch, which I didn't, f you know, kind of made it up. I actually stumbled upon it trying to create something else, and then I looked everywhere to see if it was out there, and I didn't see it, so it's really great. It stretches, and it it stretches vertically, or uh, horizontally, that's why I wanted the stripes to be vertical, but to be able to stretch it to go around the body, and it was really hard coming up with a stitch like that, but it was cool. And then this is the lace stitch pattern that's in the center. Um, you can wear that in the front or the back, it's up to you. So we're going to work through all three of these parts today. We're going to do the the Tunisian ribbing stitch, the lace, and also the mesh that makes up the body of the dress. Okay, so if you don't already have a hook like this, run out and get one and then come back and watch this video because you're going to really love using Tunisian crochet hooks. It's a double-ended. There's a reason for that. So let me pause this and get my yarn in order. And if you want to use all cotton, you can substitute the Heartland yarn with 24-7 cotton, which is 100% cotton, and this is the color Pink 101. This is great, great yarn too, and if you want a full 100% cotton, you can use these two together or use another solid um, print or yarn of your choice. So the first few rows are done using Tunisian crochet, and we're gonna go ahead and what I like to say, cast on 28. We're going to chain 28. I'm going to pause Okay, it. so once you have your, your chain of 28, the way Tunisian crochet works is you basically cast on and pull up stitches. So we're going to go ahead and go straight into the second chain from the hook, or actually the first chain from the hook. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop, and then you're going to continue that, inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, all across all of the 28 chains. And here I can speed up the video, or you can pause it and fast forward. Okay, so we're at the last stitch. Go ahead and pull up a loop in that last one. And there you'll have 28. And with Tunisian, you don't really need to chain more than what you need for your stitches. Because if you have 28, that's all you need is 28. You'll have 28 loops. So you've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22, 24, 26, 28. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. This is going to be the, it's still row one, but it's considered your reverse pass. What you're gonna do, we're gonna flip it, 
and wait for that helicopter to go by. Okay, so we're going to flip the hook. Normally with Tunisian crochet, you would add your color here and go back, but with this stitch, I flip the hook first and then go ahead and bring up your new color, which is your contrasting color. And then you're gonna pull the loop through one loop and then we're going to go ahead and chain one. Then the reverse pass is really easy. You just work through two loops by yarning over and pulling through two loops for the entire length of the row. So you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and it keeps going like that. So I'll speed this part up. So once you get to the end, you're going to have couple loops left, just keep working through those and pull through the last one. This one's going to be kind of loose, so just tug on that. And then for this pattern, we're not going to flip it. This is what your first forward and reverse pass will look like. And so that was considered your foundation. And that's the foundation forward pass and foundation reverse pass. Then we're going to work on the regular forward pass. So drop the contrasting yarn back behind, pick up your main color, and when, you're, when you choose your main color, it, the main color is going to be the most predominant one. It's going to be the one with the bars, always. And so our forward pass for that is we're going to go through, pick up a loop, insert and pick up a loop, and do that for the entire length on the next forward pass. And this would be considered row two, even though we've done a few more actions. And when you come to the end here, there's gonna be one bar here. Work through that bar. And then also, you're gonna work through these two loops on the end. So you're just gonna pick up doesn't really matter which two, just preferably the ones on the outside. So when you do end the edge stitches, each this is considered an edge stitch and this is considered an edge stitch. And if you can see back there, you see that I have the hook is through. It has one of the contrasting colors, it's kind of wrapped around that. So just yarn over, pull up a loop, and we're not going to chain one here. We're going to turn the hook and go back and work our reverse pass with their contrasting color. So here you're going to chain one and then reverse pass like normal. Just yarn over, pull through two loops each time. So once you reach this point, um, you're going to actually work, this is the first foundation row plus row two, and you're going to repeat row two until you reach the desired length that you want your um, dress size to be. And for mine, I made it fairly large because I'm not a small person, um, so it could go around, but you want to remember to account for the lace that's in between and this this lace using this yarn and this hook size measures around five inches so when you do your around just consider that you've got five inches there and you also want to make it slightly smaller because this does stretch 
this is a rib stitch see so yay rib stitching so all right we'll come back I'm not sure how long it's going to take you it did take me a while to create this but I didn't work on it full time um, depends on how fast you are so pause the video and come on back to me when you're finished all right we're back uh, how long did that take you <laughs> I hope it wasn't too tedious but so here now we've got I did about five rows this is for the sake of the tutorial though so when you get to the point where you reach the length you want to go around your body plus the five inches for the, the lace keep that in mind um, we're gonna go ahead and break this yarn and then just tie it off and pull it through and then you can weave it in and we're gonna work with just the main color for the rest of the tutorial so I'm just going to kind of smush that behind there for now and we want to bring up the main color from behind like this and bring it around and this is your edge stitch remember so we're going to recreate an edge So you're going to insert your hook into the very first edge stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And so for the very first row of the lace, we're going to um, chain one after you pull up your loop. And then we're going to single crochet into each of the top of the gaps. And when I say gap, I mean in between the two bars and underneath the contrasting color so there's your hole right there so in between the two bars underneath the contrasting color so we're going to single crochet into each of those gaps And when you get to the end, you're going to go around the end. And you should have 27 stitches. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, and 27. And I wanted to mention that when you work these, this is 28, which reduces to 27 stitches when you do the single crochets. So you want to keep this main body part an even number of stitches. So when you get to this point where we're working the lace, you want to have multiples of three so that you can work into the pattern properly. So just make sure that's multiples of three. Um, and say, so for row two, after we do our single crochet row, we're going to chain three and turn. So we chain three, we're going to turn it, and then we're going to skip the first two stitches and do a single crochet into the third, and then chain two, skip two, and do a single crochet into the next one. So this is a repeat, chain two, skip two, skip two, single crochet. Chain two, skip two, single crochet. And you repeat that to the end. Oops, 
skip two and then you single crochet into the very last one. And that's why you need multiples of three, because you're working, the pattern is chain two, single crochet, it's three stitches. All right, so once you finish that, we're going to chain one, turn, and then single crochet into the first stitch, which is right here. And then we're going to single crochet two into the chain space. And this is also in multiples of three, so we're going to chain uh, single crochet into this, single crochet, and then single crochet two into the chain space. That will keep your chain count or your stitch count at 27. When you get to the end, you do two into the very end. So there we have our 27. Here comes the magic. This is where we're going to work the lace part or the, um, the bars. And this kind of is a little bit of a Tunisian crochet technique too. So you're going to be hopefully learning something new. So here, let's, at the end, sorry for my <laughs> off-screen, chain two, and we're going to turn it. And what we're going to do here is pull up long loops, or what I call the Tunisian long stitch. So one, two, three chains from the hook. You're going to insert your hook. Kind of pull this loop a little bit to the length you want your loops. I did mine about three quarters of an inch, I suppose, about there. So yarn over and pull up and hold on to it with your thumb so you don't lose your um, tension on it. And then insert it into the top two loops of your single crochet. Yarn over and pull up again. Pinch it with your thumb. I kind of pull it off to the side a little bit. So came up with this because I wanted the look of hairpin lace without the hairpins. I've never done hairpin lace, but it looks very intimidating. But I really love the way it looks, so I thought, hmm, how could I create this look without all that complicated twisting and turning? And So I came up with this stitch using Tunisian, a, a Tunisian crochet hook. But actually, you can create this stitch using just a regular crochet hook because you don't need to, we don't actually turn it, so it doesn't have to be a double-ended. It can just be a regular old hook. So just keep doing this to the end. And when you get to the end, you'll have a bunch of loops that are all fairly the same length. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If your tension's off, you can always just rip it back and do them over again. So we're almost to the end. Got one more. All right, so we're here, so now I'm going to kind of unravel it a little bit, and you can see you've got all your loops on there. So when you get to that point, what we're going to do is we're going to do a reverse pass by yarning over, pulling through one loop, and then yarning over and drawing through two loops, just like we did the reverse pass on the other, but this time it's just very long stitches. And it creates kind of what, similar to like a broomstick lace, I suppose. Oops. It's 
So I'll speed this part up. All right, so here, see, so you see we have our lace. And we didn't turn it. What we're going to do for row number, row number five is we're going to actually chain one. We're not turning it either. We're just going to go straight back forward. And we're going to single crochet between each of these bars, just like we did on the other, um, down here to close off the other ending of the body part, I mean the tube top part. So once you chain one, go back through the center of the bars and enclose the top bar with your single crochet. Sorry guys, my brain's melting. It's 100 degrees in Memphis today. And I like to do videos outside because I like the sound of the birds and the lighting is better, the colors of the yarn show up, I don't know, I just like being outside. So we'll speed this up if you got it. Hopefully you got it. This is kind of similar to a full stitch in Tunisian crochet too. Check out, when I come out with my video series, I'm going to do a whole series on Tunisian. It's going to be fabulous. So when you reach the end, you're going to go ahead and work into this last space. And we should have 27. So we've got 2, 4, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. 20, wait, what? What did I do? 2, 4, 6, 8. 24, 25. I only have 25. That means I must have messed up somewhere, and I think I see where I did. Oops. Frogging it. That's probably because I went too fast. All right, let's see if I fixed it. Twenty-six, twenty-seven. I fixed it. Yay. Okay. So now that we've done this part, um, what you're going to do is actually repeat rows two through five three more times. So Row two, we start off with a chain three and turn. So it's one, two, three. And then that's where we do the row where we skip two and single crochet to create these holes. And so once you reach that point, we'll come back and we'll start working the mesh. We'll join them, we'll join it together and then work the mesh. Okay, so what I've done here is you want to stop when you do your, you do want to work three of them, um, except for when you get to the end, you want to stop with this row here, which is row two. So I have a total of four rows that have the large chain spaces in them. So these are a, four, a total of four rows. This is row number two. 
So we've got one, two, three, four rows, number two. So once you work this first repeat, you work it one more time, two more times, and then end with row number two because you want to make the holes be on near the edge of each so it matches. So let's do our join and I'll show you how I joined the two pieces. So we stopped with row two, which is the chain single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet. So what you do is you bring your pieces together and you can see your, your foundation row has a kind of a strange looking chain and then on this side it's just another chain. So what you want to do to join it, I kind of want this to be on the inside since it doesn't really match like the back part does. Even though it's reversible, it's still, it's better for this part to be on the outside. So when I join them, I'm going to join them like this. So that's on the inside. And so what we do to join is we're going to go straight through the edge here and it's going to be just using a slip stitch. So we're going to slip back through and then go through each stitch. Try to join through those two like that. And then when you get to the chain spaces, which are right here, you're going to work through the top part of the the stitch, not the actual chain space itself, not like this, but through the top part. Like, oops, I think I lost some of my yarn. I did splitting on me. And so just match up your stitches. Make sure they're even so that you don't skip one like I just did. <laughs> and that's basically what you do all the way down to the end. And so when you reach this side, after you've stitched them all together, you're not going to break your yarn. We're going to start working the uh, mesh pattern for the dress straight off of here. And where this joins is kind of where your seam ends up being. And I'll show you. Right here. So once you join them together, this is where your seam ends up being, but it's fairly seamless. You can't really tell. So let's get to that part. Hi again. So for the sake of the tutorial, I went ahead, I'm going to work into the top part of the dress and I pretty much simulated where we left off. So here, once you join your pieces all the way to the end, go ahead and chain three and then make a single crochet into the first contrasting color, which might be a little difficult to get in there. Ooh, that might be, that's too tight, so I'm going to go right here. So make a single crochet there, and then we're going to chain two, and single crochet into the next contrasting color, which is right here. And then chain two, and single crochet into the next contrasting color. And chain two. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when I've completed the round. So when you reach the lace pattern here, you're going to continue just working um, the single crochet and then chain two work into the first chain space, single crochet, chain two, then go ahead and work into the next stitch. 
and then work around the bars. and then chain two, then work into the next row, top of the next row, and then chain two, oops, and then work into the next row here, Tunisian hooks don't really have a very big groove, so sometimes the yarn slips off. And work into the top of the row. And do that until you reach the other end. So one, two. Then work around two of the bars. Just keep slipping off my hook. And I'm getting bit by mosquitoes and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> it's like, okay, maybe I should take these videos inside. So when you reach this part, you're almost to the end here. Chain two and then just join in this chain space here with a slip stitch. Utterly distracted by these mosquitoes. There you go. <laughs> okay. So for row, the round two, we're gonna, after we slip stitch into the chain space, we're gonna chain two. <laughs> and then single crochet into the next chain space which is here, and then that's going to repeat again and join with a slip stitch into the first chain space you created, and that row is going to repeat, you're going to repeat that row about two or th three times, and then the next one, I'm going to go ahead and work this with you, it's the kind of the pineapple stitch pattern right here. So you see you've got, these are your three lace rows, and then we're going to do a pineapple stitch and then a different kind of mesh here. So once you complete those, those three mesh rows, the first three mesh rows, then we're going to go ahead and do a, what did I do? So I've got chain. chain three and then you're going to yarn over and go into the same chain space at the beginning of the row and pull up yarn over go into the same chain space and pull up so you do it for three times total then you're going to yarn over and pull through all loops on your hook so it makes a little bobble stitch and then you chain one to close it. And then you're going to work that stitch for the, into each chain space around. Like that. Oops. So yarn over, insert into the chain space and pull up. Into the chain space and pull up. Like that. And then chain one. Now, I know this is a full tutorial, but um, it, it's really great to go over to the blog and get the pattern printed out. There's a PDF version on Etsy, $2.99. Print out that version if it's easier for you to follow along with a written pattern as well. If you don't know how to do written patterns, you should probably learn because it's you can the whole world opens up when you learn how to read patterns. It's a lot of fun, and then you can actually go ahead and start writing your own and selling them. Hey, what an idea! But the free pattern is also on my blog too, and it, the but the ad-free version is on Etsy. 
So either one is great, but I recommend printing it out, sitting down, and then you can watch the video tutorial and see where I'm going with it. Because for this tutorial, I'm kind of making a general video so that you can get an idea of how to do it. So for the stitch after, or the row number five, which comes after this pineapple row, you're going to go ahead and chain three. So we've already chained one, but that's our others. We're going to chain three. And then we're going to double crochet. This is working in the round, actually, but I'm turning it for the video tutorial so I can go back through. So you're not actually going to be turning. You're just going to keep working in the round. So you're going to double crochet in the chain space, which is here. So you're going to do a double crochet. So what that does when I change the three is it kind of makes a little square. And then you skip a stitch, which would be the pineapple stitch, and then chain one. It's actually chain one and then skip a stitch and then do another double crochet in the center of the pineapple stitches. So chain one, skip one and work a double crochet into the pineapple stitches. Chain one, skip the, skip the pineapple, and then go ahead and work a double into the chain space between the pineapple stitches. So that's, that, that's the mesh that we create, but that's the first row of the new mesh. For the second row of the new mesh, we're gonna chain, oops, we're gonna chain three, And I'm going to turn it here, but in the in your pattern, you won't be turning it because it's just going to be working in the round. So, so here, when we work the row six, which is the second of the mesh pattern, then you're going to go ahead and chain three and then double crochet into the top of the each double crochet from the previous round. So not, not in the chain space, but actually in the top two loops of the stitch itself. And then you're going to chain one, skip one, and work into the top of the double crochet. Some people like to work in the chain space. You can do that too. I just kind of liked the way that this pattern looked better with it worked into the top of the stitch. So that will make your actual mesh pattern for the rest of the dress. And that's what the rest of the dress is. So you just keep working it around and around and around until you reach your desired length and you can make it knee length or um, all the way down to your ankles if you'd like so all right cool we did it oh my god we did it yay so there you've got your heartland denali your double-ended tunisian crochet hook and your contrasting color and i love this cotton prints so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already share my videos, share my blog. I would love it. I'm, I'm looking for more fans, obviously, but if you have any questions about it, please leave a comment on my blog, and I'm always happy to answer questions about my patterns. And if you notice any mistakes, please, by all means, let me know, because we're not perfect, right? But I really, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Take care, and happy crocheting.